Welcome back, dear students, to another session on criticism. I'll be introducing you to the concept of uh, romantic criticism. Here, I present before you the 11th, 12th, and 13th sessions of Module 1 for students of BFSM, Paper 1, Criticism, prescribed for Karnataka University, Dharwad. I'm Dr. Vichalakshmi Nayak, Assistant Professor, GFGC and PG Center, Dharwad. The Romantic Age in England was not only an age of glorious poetry, but also of glorious literary criticism. In fact, most of the eminent men of letters of the age were critics as well as creative writers. Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Hazlitt, Lamb, Leake, Hunt and uh, De Quincey all contributed to critical literature. But the main critics who gave a direction in the current of literary criticism were Wordsworth, Coleridge, Lamb, Hazlitt and De Quincey. All of them have often been categorized as the romantic critics. The French Revolution in 1789 initiated the Romantic period and the Romantic era actually starts with the publication of uh, lyric, the Lyrical Ballads by uh, William Wordsworth and Coleridge in uh, 1798 and the Romantic uh, era ends with the parliamentary reforms of 1832. So it is one of the shortest eras in English literary history but it is also one of the major periods which was dominated by six poets William Blake, William Wordsworth, Samuel Coleridge, pressed by Shelley, John Keats and Byron. The Romantic Age is a period of great change in England. But before that, let us look at the word, the etymology of the word romantic. The word romantic is derived from the French word romance, which means the vulgar tongue instead of the Latin. Uh, Latin was the language of the sophisticated. The noun Roman referred to imaginative works written in the vernacular, mainly the medieval French verse epics. Thus, even linguistically, Romanticism is contrasted with Classicism and denotes the popular, adventurous and formless in literature. In this sense, it was used in French and English during the 17th century as an event or mood depicted in romance and French distinguished between romantic in a generosity derogatory sense as the something fanciful, strange and exaggerated and romantic by which was meant something tender, gentle, sentimental and melancholy. In the later sense, it was used in English throughout the 18th century and it traveled back to French and was transplanted to Germany or Romantic through the translation of English works. Now to look at the age itself, agricultural society, powerful land holding aristocracy was giving way to modern industrial nation of large scale employers and a growing restless middle class was forming. It was a time of harsh political depression in England and in spite of need for changes brought about by the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the consequence was low wage, horrible working conditions, large scale employment of women and children in brutally hard occupations such as coal mining. Women of all classes were regarded as inferior to men and they were un undereducated, had limited vocational law opportunities and were subjected to a strict code of sexual behavior and had almost no legal rights. But with the coming of the French Revolution and the old way of life was shattered and we see that the French Revolution had a great impact on Romanticism. 
Now, it was Thomas Carlyle who used the terms Romanticism, Romantic and Romanticist with reference to the Germans and in books and treatises, the term came into work in England in 1850s. The French Revolution with its slogan of liberty, equality and fraternity fueled and planted in the minds of the people fresh impulses demanding social and political reforms. Certain inherited beliefs concerning the very fabric of society came to be replaced by fresh thinking on morality and duty. The writings of Rousseau, and the French philosopher who pleaded for individual freedom and autonomy and William Goldwyn and reforms. We also have many, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft who pleaded for the rights of women, who also influenced public opinion enormously. Concepts such as truth, nature, God and plenitude were redefined. So we see that there was no longer <clears throat> kings and princesses, they were no longer regarded as the best subject matter for poetry. In fact, the common man becomes the subject matter. We see a lot of pastoral and rustic life coming into poetry. There was no longer a kept depo a decorum as the special purpose of the poet. And import importance was given to individual responsibility than adherence to customs, conventions, and traditions. The Romantics believed that poetry made uninteresting and familiar things interesting and novel by the association of ideas to the ordinary things. They believed that this coloring of imagination or association of ideas was possible only if the mind of the poet was in a state of excitement. The Romantics achieved this state, this state of excitement, when they thought about the divinity that is present in everything. And that is why they almost worshipped nature. Liberalism was fed and nourished by Longinus, whose essay on the sublime, which was written circa 3rd century BC, uh, had been revived and translated into French towards the close of the 17th century and was widely read in England. Writers like to create unhampered by rules and uh, conventions and the critics to judge according to their own light. Increasingly, men of genius like Wordsworth and Coleridge voiced their protest against neoclassicism and through their critical pro pronouncement laid the foundations of romantic criticism. They gave a definite program and consciousness to the romantic movement. An undercurrent of change was flowing which burst into life with the publication of Wordsworth's preface to lyrical ballads in the 1800s. Uh, and uh, Wordsworth issued his famous proclamation about the nature of poetry as the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. With this statement, Wordsworth posited a very different view of poetry than was standard at that time, shifting the center of attention from the work as a reflection or imitation of reality to the artist and the artist's relationship to the work. Poetry would henceforth be considered an expressive rather than a main 